Hi, my name is Colton Dean and this is my uh, position paper presentation. The Federal Communications Commission sets limits on numbers of broadcasting stations, radio and TV as an entity as its own and as required by uh, Congress, the FCC reviews most of its media ownership rules every four years to determine whether the rules are public interest or repel or modify any regulation it determines does not meet this criteria. And details of the current ownership rules are summarized below. And in the 2017, the commission eliminated its rule that had previously prohibited common ownership of a full power broadcast station and a daily newspaper. At the same time, the commission also eliminated the radio television cross ownership rule which had restricted the common ownership of broadcast radio television stations located in the same market. So these two rules that the newspaper broadcast co uh, cross ownership and radio television cross ownership rules were eliminated due in part to the growth in the number of and variety of sources of entertainment, news, and information in the modern media market. In this industry, uh, they have the option to do so. The challenges and responsibilities will be are always there and they always exist. We'll need to find out each one of them and make sure we have a potential to face these things. The let's see through detailed uh, archival analysis of personal letters, the article examines how the public interest mandate of the Commission's Act of 1934 inspired the formation of the Princeton Radio Research Project, that's the PRRP, and influenced Paul Larsfield's development of two-step flows in media effects research. And crucial to the intellectual history of media and communication theory, Larsfield's inv invited Adermo not only to develop these techniques, but to inform educational music study but to strategically formulate advocacy language for media reform movement to help the non-commercial media obtain frequency licenses. Various economic and political factors that possibly contributed to the auction disappointment including the asymmetric information between the broadcast industry and the FCC and the broadcast industry's warning influence over the FCC. These issues are explored through a mixed method study consisting of quantitative auction data sets and interviews with broadcast professionals. Experts assert the broadcasting networks involved in transmitting mass information among individuals from different sections of society eventually should avert from exhibiting uh, inappropriate contents. These emphasize upon the matter of fact that it's essential concern authorities implement adequate measures facilitating to effectively deal with complaints from the public against such networks violating the broadcasting rules in the in the given case court in the given court case has an obligation to voice its opinion on the matter of rules experts assert the court eventually should provide FCC appropriate guidelines facilitating facilitating them to correctly determine and avert broadcasting of inappropriate contents. The FCC abolished the fairness doctrine like they should have, and I agree that they should have, promoting some to urge its reintroduction through the commission policy or congressional legislation. However, later it, uh, the FCC removed the rule that implementing the policy from the Federal Register in uh, that was August 2011. The Fairness Doctrine had two basic elements. It required broadcasters to devote some of their airtime to discussing controversial matters of public interest and to air contesting views regarding those that matter. Thank you. This is my presentation. I'm Colton Dean.